And I thought I'd just bring the verses here, why not? So I've hidden it up places that confirm that Jesus is God. He's God the Son, right? So the first place is amazing, and I think I, should, I, I actually read this verse um, probably a couple of weeks ago from a different angle about a sign being given to us. Um, it's from Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Mighty God! Mm. This was Isaiah who said this about Jesus. He was mighty God. He wasn't just God, he was mighty God. So Isaiah had the revelation 700 years before Jesus was born. Hallelujah! And then Matthew, it was repeated. Don't worry about the places because I'll give you, give you a copy of this at the end. Matthew 1.23 so behold, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. So about his birth, they were saying, God's with us. I've got some other verses here which don't actually say that. I actually think in five places in the Bible it says Jesus is God directly blatantly, strongly. But this one is Matthew 16. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. So, he's going to come in the glory of his Father. That sounds pretty much like God to me. He comes in the glory of the Father. No, no normal person can come in the glory of his Father. And then he said in Matthew 28, Go there and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That sounds pretty equal to me, doesn't it? Those three dimensions, baptized into each one of those three. In the, name, in the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. So that makes, makes me see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in a, in a God realm. Do you think that's right? <clears throat> and then, the <clears throat> <clears throat> then they said, all said, you are the son of God then. This is just before he's cru crucified, right? This is Jesus. You are the son of God then. And he said to them, just as you say, I am. And you know, they would know what that, they would know what that meant when he said, I am. Because when God said to Moses, you're going to get these guys out of this land of Egypt and you're going to take them away, God, um, um, Moses was apprehensive, didn't know who, who to say, this guy, that, this being that had spoken to them, who he was that, was going, that said this, to told, told Moses to go and do the job. And God said to Moses, I am who I am, and what I am, and I will be what will be. And he said, you say this to the Israelites, I am has sent you. I am has sent you. God called himself I am. And Jesus, when he was up going to the cross, he said, I am. I believe that totally connects the fact that he's God, right? Mm. He just repeated the, the I am. And here is the verse, which I quoted to my mother when I was 20, which is a couple of years ago. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. And I remember reading that as a 20-year-old, and thinking, hey, this Jesus is God. So I kind of tried to tell people, but nobody has listened, so... Yeah. He was presently present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him and without him was not even one thing made that came into being. It had to be him that even created us, okay? In him was life 
And the life was the light of men. Just keep that light of men thing. And the light shines in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. There came a man from John. I used to know, I and mean, I used to know this chapter off by heart when I was 18. We used to learn verses. I knew, I knew this one, 23rd Psalm, Psalm 104, 1 John, John 1, Genesis 1. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I suppose it stood by me during the year. The came, this man came to be a witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe through him. He was not the light himself, but he came that he might be a witness regarding the light. There, there it was, the true light, coming into the world that illuminates every person. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, this Jesus, although Jesus made all this, the world did not recognize him. He, he came to that which belonged to him, his own, which is his whole creation, but they did not receive him and welcome him. But as to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority to become the children of God. Amen to that. Hallelujah on that one. That is to those who believe in his name. Who owe their birth neither to bloods nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, they are born of God. And then here comes this word that was God on this next verse. And the word Christ became became flesh. So this word, which is God, became flesh, which absolutely proves that Jesus was God, is God. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. And we get to where, where Thomas was questioning of the whole thing about the resurrection. And he said to Thomas, this is Thomas, after he died and was risen again, reach out your finger there, and put it in out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless. Stop unbelieving. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Call him God. Thomas, the unbelieving Thomas, now said he's God. Do you think do you think when Jesus said, Put your finger in my hand, which was a kind of a not a great hole, <coughs> nail hole. That was a possibility, right? The resurrected Jesus I'm talking about. Then he said, put out your hand and place it in my side. That must have been an enormous hole. Can you imagine putting your hand in your side, or anybody's side, putting it in there? He was actually saying, this hole that is on Jesus is big enough to put your hand in. Otherwise he wouldn't have said it. It's a huge rift. And, you know, there's possibility that Thomas did it. So he said, my Lord and my God, I see that and I know that you are a God. In Titus, there's three verses that actually... It said... Don't steal by taking things of small value, but to prove them, prove themselves loyal, trustly, reliable, and faithful, so that in everything they may be a, an ornament and a credit to the teaching which is from and about God our Saviour. That's St. Thomas. God our Saviour. Our Saviour is God. Second chapter says, For the grace of God has come forward. Who was what was the grace of God that came forward? appearing for the deliverance from sin and eternal salvation for all mankind. The grace of God that came forward. That was Jesus. Come out of, out of heaven. Got put inside a woman's womb. Got born out. That's the grace of God that came forward. And the third one in Tom, well, looks just a couple. Right, in, in Titus, awaiting and looking for the Realisation of blessed hope, even the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. That's an amazing verse. Our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. 
And then the last verse in Titus says, And when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour. Titus contains three times the reference to the church. 1 John 1.1 1, 1, we're, work, work, we're writing about the word of life who existed from the beginning. The life was revealed and we saw and we're testifying and declare to you the life, the eternal life, which already existed with the Father who was made visible as Jesus. And then in 1 John 1.5, and this is a message, the message of promise which we have heard from him, that you, we are reporting to you, God is light. But it says that Jesus is light too. So he must be God. And there's no darkness in him at all. And I've just got to cut one more thing here. In Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, in many separate revelations set forth, a portion of the truth, and in many in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers by the prophets. But this is, I love this, but in the last days he has spoken to us through the person of his Son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, and by whom he created the worlds and reaches of space and the ages of time. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. That's Jesus. Sole expression of that. The light being, he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. When he had offered himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins, the riddance of guilt, sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. And I actually thought of this here, the divine majesty on high. It doesn't say he's sitting on the... He's sitting beside God. It's almost like this majesty is, is the two of them. Because it says on the right hand of the divine majesty. Well, I know that's God, but it was sort of like a coloration of in this area here, we are God. I like that last bit there, though. He's accomplished our cleansing of sins. That's good, isn't it? And riddance of guilt. Ever had a guilt trip? If you're honest. Well, it's rid of, he's rid you of it. You don't have to have a guilt trip. He's rid you of guilt. And this is my last verse. It's in Hebrews 1.8. Hebrews 1.8. Moreover, when he brings the firstborn son again into the habitable world, you know what that was? When he was risen from the dead, let all the angels of God worship him. Referring to the angels, he says, who made his angels winds and his ministering servants flames of fire. But as to the Son, he says to him, listen, this is the Son, your throne, O God. He's saying this to the Son. Your throne, Son, your throne, O God. He calls him God. It's a, I think it's a quote from the Psalms. It's forever. So, if you came here this morning and didn't believe that Jesus was God, I'm quite sure you all have, because I've never had to pursue that. It's all okay. You haven't been told a lie. The Bible says so. Enjoy him as God. I really haven't got much more to say on that, um, except I kind of like... I like, the, I like the exercise. And I mean, I have to believe that Bible verses are powerful. They can tidy up a lot of lies, heresies, and they can tidy up just people talking off the top of the head. If there's no truth in it, a verse makes it legalist, not legal. It, well, it makes it, it makes it authentic, should I say. Yeah, so you like it? Let's just stand up. Just let's, come on, stand up. Come on, stand up. Let's give a, let's give a bit of a hallelujah to Jesus as God. Come on. Jesus, we thank you. Just make a bit of noise to him. Come on. Jesus, we thank you that you're God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Glory to you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Just give him some praise. Come on. 
Give him some hallelujahs. Jesus, you're amazing. You are God in flesh. You loved us so much. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just thank you that you came. God, you came on earth in the form of a man. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just give him some hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. Glory, glory, glory. You deserve all our praise, all our honor, all your good work. And no words can describe it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He's worthy of our praise. He, he listens for his heart. So I like it. I like it. I like it. You know, a little baby, when you go, 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 touch it under the chin, you know how it responds and gives you a laugh? I'm sure God does. There's something happened up there. When we give him praise, we're not tickling him under the chin. We're just, just saying, Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Whew. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You have God, and it makes a difference to know you are God. Mighty God. Mighty God, it says. You're mighty God. And you're in us. You're mighty God in us now. Hallelujah. And you are mighty God interceding to mighty God. You know Jesus is interceding for you right now? The high priest, and he is mighty God interceding to mighty God. He is mighty God the Son who is interceding to God the Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I like all that. Huh. Okay, well, you may be seated.